Welcome to our first Sunday of Lent service, which today comes from this um, old church, which is uh, looked after by the Church's Conservation Trust. Um, it's a national charity that protects churches that are at risk. Um, it's no longer used for regular worship, um, but it remains consecrated and open uh, to all. And this rather lovely old churchyard with lots of old table graves here. Um, but it's a very cold, stormy day, so let's get in. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, After me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, and grant him most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you absolution and remission of your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Today you 
faces of people that dwell in the hearts, for they have also my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The following reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. And it came to pass in those days, that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised of John in Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe in the gospel. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 25, verses 1 to 9. Unto thee, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. My God, I have put my trust in thee. O let me not be confounded, neither let mine enemies triumph over me. For all they that hope in thee shall not be ashamed, but such as transgress without a cause shall be put to confusion. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. Lead me forth in thy truth, and learn me, for thou art the God of my salvation. In thee hath been my hope all the day long. Call to remembrance, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses which have been of old. O remember not the sins and offences of my youth, but according to thy mercy think thou upon me, O Lord, for thy goodness. Gracious and righteous is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Them that are meek shall he guide in judgment. And such as are gentle, them shall he learn his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. And to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This reading is taken from the first epistle of Peter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Here ends the lesson. Before his presence 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. The Collect for the First Sunday in Lent. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness to thy honour and glory who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world and thank God for his goodness. We pray today for the Church of Ireland, particularly the Diocese of Meath and Kildare. We pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. We pray for our partner Diocese of Western Tanganyika. We pray for the Anglican Church of Canada. Here in this diocese, we pray for the benefits of Brimsfield. We all pray for our preparations for our Lenten fast, that God will stir up within us something of his grace 
as we take time out of our ordinary lives to be with him. Pray for our diocesan bishop, Bishop Rachel, and for our own bishops, wherever we are, and clergy. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world around us. Pray for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family, for our Prime Minister and Government. Pray for all who are responsible for giving vaccinations, for the rollout roll out of the vaccinations. We pray for the turmoil in the world, for an end to it, for peace to, and justice to reign particularly thinking of Myanmar and the safe return of their leader, Ho Sang Suu Kyi, for the people there, their courage, giving thanks for their courage and praying for them. We also pray for the people of Yemen Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the bereaved. Have a moment to think of anyone we know who needs our prayers, particularly at this time. <clears throat> We pray for, in this parish, Mary and Gordon, for David, for Terry, for Olive, for Bridget, for Carolyn. for Betty. For all who need our prayers at this time, for Stephanie, for her mother, we may humbly beseech thee, O Lord, to comfort and strengthen all those who in this life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed, remembering those who've died recently, particularly Sandy, for Bobby, Margaret, Bruce, Tim, for Kay, and Annie Lou, and Colin. Any who we particularly miss at this time, or who we have lost, remembering that they are with God, and God is with us, and we are with them. Through our faith. Pray for all those we love but see no longer, for those whose ears and minds fall at this time, for Leslie Milsom, Adrian Knight, Maureen Watts, Leslie Anstey, and Angela Chilcott. May the souls of the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, 
as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Jesus, you love the of my soul.
May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading this week tells us that it was the Spirit that drove Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted. Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit, and the Spirit does nothing without purpose or intention. Just as we know that the temptations of Christ were necessary and brought him through the thorny hedge of distractions and more worldly aims, our trials can also have a purifying effect on us. But what is it that we need to get away from? What is our wilderness and where is it? Hassan Chabri, writing in the papers about the app TikTok, says this, Part of the magic of TikTok is that there's no one for you, no one for you feed. There's no one for you feed, while different people may come upon some of the same standout videos. Each person's feed is unique and tailored to that specific individual. At the heart of the system is an algorithm that powers recommendations in a way that is unlike anything else, making it a prized asset for the app. It's the reason why the viral video app, which has more than 2 billion downloads globally, is so addictive. That's not by way of advertising TikTok, but it is to give you an example that as with so many apps that are available, we can be in touch with so many different people all the time, and we're giving, given a sense that we are connected to other people, that we're not alone. It feeds us with that sense of being part of the world, even though we may be on our own at home. And maybe it's been a really good thing for some people during lockdown, but whether it is as good as a proper telephone call uh, is another matter. But Jesus was driven into the wilderness, the place where nothing was tailored to him and his needs, where he was in as alien an environment as it's possible to be. He was, in a sense, away from his phone, away from the demands that others placed upon him, away from all the sort of things that we have these days, away from the place where he was needed and where he was somebody, away from all that. That's what the wilderness is. In Lent, we're challenged to follow Jesus into the wilderness, into a voluntary place of emptiness where our roots can be watered. Now Jesus was tempted by all kinds of things, the possibilities of getting worldly wealth and power and making himself the hero rather than giving God the glory. And we too need to be aware of things that we're tempted by, of our temptations. In everything we do, we, have, we all have this one temptation, and that is to focus on ourselves, on our needs, our ambitions, our worldly comfort. Maybe during Lent, we can focus instead on the deeper side of who we are, what God is saying to us on our discipleship of Jesus. How and where each of us go into the wilderness is up to us. Where our wilderness is, is different for each of us. Rowan Williams, in Silence and Honey Cakes, confesses to the temptation to think that if only one was elsewhere, all would be well. He writes this, Somewhere else, I would be nicer, holier, more balanced, more detached about criticism, more disciplined, able to sing in tune, and probably thinner as well. Where we are actually may be just fine, 
because the wilderness can be very near to us. We may just have to open our eyes and look. If we wish to follow Jesus, we need to go into the wilderness. And there, standing alone in the shadows of our fears and temptations, be with God, whose presence is often invisible and unfelt. It's a place where we are alone and without distractions, no feeds coming through. Maybe that place for you is upon your bed, away from the rest of the family, or anywhere away from your telephone or your mobile. Or maybe for you it's on a walk, or on a run, doing some sort of exercise in your garage, or maybe just sitting still, switching the television off for 10 minutes. I hope you can find your wilderness, your place of solitude, to spend time with God this Lent. I wish you well, and may it be a strengthening time. Amen. Before I give you the blessing, can I just say that uh, next Sunday we have a guest preacher. He is the Reverend Richard Atkins, who is a presenter on Radio Gloucester, um, was Radio Gloucestershire first thing um, on Sunday mornings. And uh, a couple of weeks back, a couple of weeks back, he was interviewing Ben, who is the videographer and the organist and the producer of the YouTube. Um, and Chris Andrew, who is our reader and um, is very good at promoting um, our YouTube services. Um, and Richard will be preaching. Uh, he's a Methodist minister and he's a canon of Gloucester Cathedral. So we look forward um, to welcoming Richard to uh, our pulpit, as it were, next Sunday. So let us pray for God's blessing on all for whom we love and care and for whom we've prayed today. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.